Dragon Valor often receives a bit of a bad rep. Whilst there is nothing really outstanding about its storyline, there isn't anything especially wrong with it. It revolves around a young man named Clovis, who upon returning home sees his sister pass away before his very eyes thanks to the invasion of a dragon. He soon sets out and vows to take revenge, which is where the player comes in. Depending on your actions throughout the game, the story can largely differ by offering several forking paths, and because of this, a nice amount of replay value is afforded to the adventure. Even though the story the story is quite cliche, the gameplay is what really helps Dragon Valor excel. It's essentially an action game with various RPG elements such as Clovis's progression and several types of magic, weapons and armor that help the player forge their own character. On the note of evolving stats, the way to improve your character is simple. Instead of forcing you to fight enemies over and over again to improve yourself, you have to collect various items, from simple scrolls, gems and various other objects, to improve your strength. From HP to MP and defense, there are many items in the game that correspond with each attribute, so tracking them all down is a challenge within itself. If you're at all a passing fan of the RPG genre, Dragon Valor offers up enough variety in its gameplay and presents a notable adventure. Over the years, Hard Edge has garnered a somewhat bad reputation. It's most often referred to as a botched Resident Evil clone, and although it does share many similarities with the RE series, it's not half as bad as many people make out. Your role is to infiltrate a building with the hopes of bringing down a group of terrorists who have their eyes set on taking control of an orbital weapon. You have four characters at your disposal to achieve this goal. Each of them naturally possess their own unique attributes such as weapons and different fighting styles that make playing as each a completely different affair from the last. One aspect that may have the potential to turn some players off is that no new weapons can be found throughout the adventure. Instead, they are all unlocked after the game's completion, which results in players having to constantly use the same method of attack. It can become quite stale, but in my opinion, it's not enough to sour the entire experience overall. Visually, this is where Hard Edge excels. The use of pre-rendered backgrounds allows each area to come to life in many detailed ways. From the deserted office buildings to the more sinister science labs, there's a great amount of variation when it comes to the world. I'd say if you've never got around to playing it, Hard Edge is well worth it, especially if you're a fan of the early Resident Evil titles. The PS1 was home to many solid beat-em-ups. From the likes of Fighting Force to Panzer Bandit, players were literally spoiled for choice when it came to new and exciting takes on the genre. One that often gets overlooked though is Gear Fighter Dendo, which is largely based upon the anime of the same name. Story-wise, an alien threat hell-bent on destruction has made its new home on the moon and is preparing to unleash its power upon the Earth. Luckily, a secret robot has been created to counteract the threat, and this is where the player comes in. On the gameplay front, it's a pretty standard experience if you're familiar with the genre, with your robot possessing a string of basic attacks that can all be linked together, as well as a far more devastating ability that can summon several animals to assist you. One aspect which helps Gear Fighter stand out is the unique way it handles boss fights. Some of them require the player to leave the side-scrolling action behind and instead face off in a 3D fighting arena, much like Tekken or Soul Blade. You possess most of the same abilities during these face-offs and they soon become one of the best parts of the game. One one aspect that will stick out to many though is the gorgeous hand-drawn visuals. Each backdrop, enemy and character are all presented in the same loving detail which adds an overall impressive aesthetic to the adventure. If beat-em-ups are your thing, Gear Fighter Dendo is worth a go. Chaos Break is essentially a Resident Evil clone, but it isn't just any clone. It's also a spin-off of Taito's 98 arcade game Chaos Heat, so it should come as no surprise that the combat here doesn't follow the lock and shoot mechanics from RE, but instead it's faster and more arcadey. Just facing the general direction of your target and pressing the fire button does the trick. Likewise, the game doesn't feature tank controls and cinematic camera angles are far and few between. This mixing of arcade elements with the RE formula reminds me a lot of Blue Sting Yet personally, I like Chaos Break a lot more, mostly because the camera isn't awful. Now, Chaos Break is also a fully 3D game rendered in real time. The downside to that are the environments. Most of the locations where you find monsters running amok look way too basic. 
they just don't feel lived in and it's easy to get lost since all of the areas look really similar. However, the character and monster models are all quite good. The two playable characters sport a highly stylized anime look and the monster design is also quite decent. Much like its clear inspiration, several puzzles also litter the adventure. From item-based quests to just run-of-the-mill head scratches, there is plenty of challenge to get stuck into. By no means is Chaos Break an incredible game, but it does present a few gameplay quirks of its own that manage to help it stand out. Capcom were well known for their mastery of the fighting genre back in the day, with many unique and often quirky games finding their way out of the company. Cyberbot's Full Metal Madness is one of them, and much like the name suggests, it's all about larger-than-life robots facing off in style. Now there's not that much in the way of story, with it simply focusing on various pilots from around the world who are either trying to protect or ultimately take over the planet. But for what it lacks in narrative flair, it more than makes up for in gameplay. There's several robots to choose from, each of them have a selection of basic attacks that is formed by the simple free button setup. You have a punch, kick and a dash, as well as several unique abilities that make each of the robots stand out. One aspect of the gameplay though, which soon becomes a huge part of each fight, is that each robot is made up of several parts. By targeting specific areas, these components can be destroyed, which results in those moves that correspond with the parts becoming unavailable. It manages to add an extra dimension to each encounter, as well as a layer of strategy not often found in others on the market. If you're a fan of Capcom's 2D fighters, you will not want to miss this one. Its fresh and accessible approach is something that any player can enjoy. When it comes to console mascots, it can be quite tricky to pull off. Nintendo and Sega have enjoyed the success that both Mario and Sonic bring them, but when the PlayStation 1 first released, it obviously had no mascot to call its own. Before Crash Bandicoot, the first attempt at filling this void was Hermie Hopperhead. It's a side-scrolling platformer that takes much inspiration from its competition. The player is presented with a series of levels that naturally increase in difficulty the further you progress. There's nearly 70 in total that are spread across a variety variety of locales, such as forests, deserts and underwater caverns, that all feel unique in their presentation. Hermes' main attack is to jump on enemies' heads, but he can also rely on his little egg buddies that he collects throughout the game. They follow behind you, which instantly brought back memories of Nintendo's Yoshi's Island, and the eggs that Hermes collects have a multitude of uses. Not only can they be used to attack enemies, but they also act like the rings in Sonic games. If Hermes is hit by an enemy, the eggs scatter, and the player needs to collect them if he wants to survive another hit. If you have no eggs when you're hit, then it's game over. At certain points, Hermie can use them as platforms to reach certain places that are too high to reach by jumping alone. Now overall, Hermie Hopperhead is not the most unique platformer on the system, but still one that deserves a go. After the huge success of the anime, it was a bit of a no-brainer that Ghost in a Shell would eventually be adapted into a game. Instead of following the movie beat for beat, it instead forges its own path and presents an entirely new story for fans to digest. You play the role of a rookie who has been recently recruited to be a member of Public Security Section 9, aiding in fighting off a group known as the Human Liberation Front. Your duties see you suiting up inside a spider-like tank and visiting various locations within the city to ultimately stop the their violent activities. This tank takes combat to an entirely different level, with it having the ability to walk on any surface. Naturally, it possesses a bunch of weapons as well, such as a standard gun as well as rockets and grenades that can bring down enemies in a flash. Now, the adventure is largely split up into missions, with most of them requiring the player to locate several items in order to advance to the boss. And this is where Ghost in the Shell really starts to shine. These encounters are a true highlight and bring the many mechanics you learn along the way to the forefront. You'll be sliding around in style and picking off enemies with ease in no time. If you're a fan of the anime, this one is a must. And if you've never actually seen it, Ghost in the Shell is still a well-presented and competent shooter that anyone can enjoy. The PS1 was well known for many of the incredible racing games that released for it over the years. From Gran Turismo to one of my all-time favourites, Ridge Racer Type 4, there was always something for driving fans on the console. Leaving behind the more realistic takes on the sport is a rather forgotten game known as RC to Go. As you would expect, it all centres around the use of radio-controlled cars and presents a somewhat arcadey experience for players to enjoy. The most notable aspect of the game has to be the sheer amount of content that's included. There's a healthy 
amount of tracks to race on, 14 in total, as well as a wide selection of unlockable cars that are all dealt out at a generous pace. From Subarus to ambulances and even fucking beavers, there's a distinct amount of charm that RC to go conveys. Each track is quite small with various details that help each location come to life. From the school area to the more impressive like the countryside, there's plenty of variation that helps each and every race feel fresh. As with most racing games, there are several modes to get stuck into as well, with the championship offering the real meat and potatoes of the game. You collect credits for winning each race in this mode, which can then be spent on upgrading your vehicle's attributes or acquiring completely new cars altogether. I'll be honest, when I first started playing it, I didn't think I would enjoy it, but after some time with rc to go it's bound to hook you in and will no doubt keep you coming back for more. Dr. Slump is a weird and wacky experience, just like the anime show that it's based on. The story centers around the creation of a robot named Arel and is broken up into several different chapters. At the beginning it sees you exploring the town and interacting with various NPCs as you learn more about the village and more importantly yourself. You are constantly drip fed new abilities such as several attacks or running incredibly fast that lends the adventure a sort of RPG flavor. It never goes too far down this road though, it instead feels more like a 3D platformer, but it does add a nice bit of variation to the game and provides a means to constantly improve your character. Now the most striking thing about the adventure has to be the visuals. For a PS1 game, it manages to create a somewhat charming and lived-in world for the player to explore at their leisure. It's all presented in a vibrant and playful manner that is bound to draw players in. It seems to share much in common with the likes of Mega Man Legends and pulls off the aesthetic it's going for perfectly. Now gameplay-wise, Dr. Slump is quite easy. This a few boss fights you might find challenging, but overall it never really pushes back. It's not a deal breaker, but something maybe should have been addressed. If you're fond of the weird and wonderful, Dr. Slump deserves a look. The world of Legend of Lagaya sees humanity depending on objects known as Saru. They grant the user the ability to wield magic and incredible powers once worn. After a mysterious mist engulfs the planet and starts turning the Saru users evil, it's up to three heroes to bring an end to it. In order to do so, they must locate various trees throughout the land that have the power to drive the mist away. Now what truly makes Legend of Lagaya stand out is the incredible battle system. It is highly unique for an RPG and is all based around abilities known as art. The player has the opportunity to essentially chain various attacks together in order to create their own combos. When certain conditions are met, they can unleash these abilities and level enemies in the blink of an eye. Magic on the other hand requires something known as a Rasuru. It has the potential to assimilate monsters as well, which can then in turn be used to fight by your side. It's a great little system that all comes together to create one of the best aspects of the experience. If you never got round to playing Legend of Lagaya and are a fan of RPGs, this one is a must. Well that does it for today's video, don't forget to hit subscribe and follow me on all of the socials to stay up to date on future videos and to take part in free giveaways. You can also join our growing community on Discord and meet many like-minded gamers to continue the conversation with. I'd like to give a special shout out to our Patreon supporters as well, Rhino, Skill Jim, Nano, Steve and Paddy J for their continued support that helps make these videos possible. If you're interested in joining our Discord or supporting the channel through Patreon, you'll find these links in in the description. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video, it's really appreciated. I will catch you in the next one.